Good morning, everybody. You are listening to KTOP Radio, 1640 AM. This is the show, Utah Home Sweet Home. And I'm your host, Yoshi Shiraki. We have our very special guest, Diane Thomas, who is visiting with me today. Hi, Diane. Hi. Great How, to see you. Great to see you, too. And I was just telling Bailey, you know what's so funny is that we just discovered we are neighbors. I know. Right? Last Amazing. week. Amazing. Ten, ten, ten houses. Ten houses. <laughs> and you know what else I love about that is you lived in New York for, was it 10 years, 8 years? Almost yeah. a decade, yeah. right? Right. I lived in New York for 18 years on 94th and Amsterdam, and you were on 93rd. 3rd and Amsterdam. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. What are the chances of that? I know. And why didn't I meet you back there? I know. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. Awesome. So, for those of you who don't know Diane, I'm going to share a little bit about her. So, Diane during the past 25 years has delivered more than 5,000 media appearances. She's the author of 19 books including the New York Times bestseller Roughing It Easy. Write that down, roughingiteasy.com. You're definitely one, going to want to go to that website check it out. Which has more, which has sold more than a million copies. I love the book by the way. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Diane uh, was also a network reporter for eight years on NBC's Today Show. Tom Brokaw, NBC's news anchor, said Diane made her network television debut on NBC's Today Show and quickly became one of the most popular featured performers. And I love that. I, I, I'm going to ask you how that, how you, one of the questions I'm so curious is how that happened. Because you're from Monticello, Utah. That's right. I lived in the woods. Yes. You know? <laughs> and now you're on the Today Show as a regular. I mean, that's just unheard of. That's amazing. Well, so thank you. we'll ask a little bit about that. Um, <clears throat> she's done television appearances that have led to contracts for the NBC's Today Show where she was a regular, as we just discussed, that was followed by a six-year contract with ABC's Home Show. So then you were on the Home Show. Yes. Holy Which cow. was the same place The View is, so it was national, uh, it was on ABC, and it was amazing. So. Was that in New York too? No, that was in Los Angeles. So okay. I would go to New York one time, LA, I mean almost every week I was going back and forth. Wow, with stops in Monticello. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> During this time, she also appeared on several times on the ABC Good Morning America and numerous other national and local television programs. She's still a sought after presenter, speaker, and television television personality and I am lucky enough to have her here in the studios. Well, you were one of my students. Yes. And actually you were my star student. Oh, well. thank you. <laughs> thank you. So Diane Thomas is my mentor, one of my mentors as far as entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. And how to do television, how to do radio, how to do magazines. And yes. Here you are. You have your own show. And I have my own show now. That's great. And for those that don't know, it's looking like I'm going to be on Good Things Utah in January. Nice. Yes. Nice. So, I'm a testimonial for Diane Thomas. If you've ever thought about becoming a television or radio personality, go to her website. I don't know if she's still mentoring anybody, but you can ask her on her website. Maybe sure. she'll do it. Sure. <laughs> go to my website, send me an email, and I'll be happy to talk to you. Yes, yes. Okay, so let's dive into this. And for those of you who are listening, you guys are in for a special treat because you're definitely going to also want to watch the video on YouTube that we put up because Diane's brought in a ton of stuff that she shares in her book, Roughing It Easy. So, uh, actually, can you just share really quickly how the idea came about as far as Roughing It Easy? Like, what made you write this book? I actually went to Brigham Young University and graduated as a home economist. Oh! And was able to get a job at Orem Junior High School, which is just, you know, it's off 8th and North as you go down to Orem. Yeah! Anyway, as a home ec teacher, I had been wor I had been the camp director of the Brighton Girls Camp, and some of the people in this area probably went uh, to the Brighton Girls Camp. Yeah. I had no time to plan make lesson plans, so I went <laughs> right from being the director of the camp. Yes. We had uh, 1,500 student uh, kids up there, and I was in charge of the faculty and everything, so I had to help close it down, and we closed on Saturday night. I started teaching on Monday morning. Wow. And I go, I don't have any lesson plans. We'll start out by cooking on tin cans. Wow. And so I, we made little buddy burners out of tuna fish can with rolled up cardboard and wax melted into it. No and all the way. kids would bring their little tuna fish cans. And then we'd cut a number 10 can, which is about a gallon can. Yeah. We'd cut the, a door in it, poke holes in the back. And we'd be out there on the sidewalk cooking on these little tin cans. No way. And the principal loved it. So I said to another teacher, because I was brand new, I said, Hal, yeah. I want to take these kids up in the mountains and cook. Yeah. And he left and he came back and he says, I got your kids out and I got my kids out. 
<laughs> and so we did take the kids up for a day to Granite Flats. Some of you may know that. No way! In American Fork Canyon. And we, uh, we dug holes, we buried chickens in the ground, we cooked in Dutch ovens, made pineapple upside down cakes. Wow! The kids loved it. And so I kept teaching them that. You know? Yeah! And my principal, he... He, we had a lot of students from broken homes, and he said, I want these kids out experiencing life. Wow. So I had a huge green light from him. So I spent a month <laughs> teaching my ninth grade students and my eighth grade students how to cook, cook out. Well, you'll enjoy this one. We needed yeah. to have a barbecue. Well, you don't have a budget for barbecues right. in the school as a home ec teacher your first year. <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, I waited till it got dark one night, and this is when we had metal garbage can lids. Yeah. All the old garbage cans. Yes. I backed my car up and took six of the garbage can lids from the from the garbage, put them in the wow. trunk. Wow. Uh, the next morning I had bricks. You need three bricks to set them on. Yeah. And then put dirt from the you know, the flower beds into them. Yes. Put foil over that, put charcoal briquettes on that, and then each one of my units, we had six, had a place to barbecue their hamburgers and we'd cook meatloaf what? in an onion. In an onion. Love That's it. Right. And we'll tell you about that yes. in a few minutes. But anyway, so that night we took off the foil, threw it away, put the dirt back in the flower bed, put the garbage can lids, I waited till it got dark backed up, put them all on. The only thing that happened during that day is the garbage can, can lids had been sterilized. So, <laughs> anyway, I didn't ask for permission. I just figured, just do it. And yes. so that was the beginning. I, the kids loved it. My principal loved it. And so I started teaching it. And then when I went back to BYU to get my master's degree, uh, I did it on how to do, how to teach home ec students, how to home ec teachers can teach outdoor camping and cooking in their home ec classes. Wow. And we had teachers come up from all over the state, and I did five two-day workshops. We would uh, actually have theory one day, and then we'd go up Mapleton Canyon. No way. And cook out and for the whole day, and they would cook chickens on a spit. And wow. I even had one girl, I told them, you have to bring a chicken yeah. to cook. Yeah, yeah. So she went up to BYU and asked him to get a chicken. Well, they gave her a chicken in a box, which was a live chicken. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> she had been on a mission in South America and knew what to do with the live chicken. Oh, my gosh. Wow. That was one of the best learning experiences because she did take the head off, you know, and pluck the chicken Holy there and cow. opened it up. And anyway, it was a great experience. So. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. That is so cool. And then, and then from there, how does, how does the Today Show find you? Well, I actually wrote the curriculum guides, okay. and uh, BYU said that they would publish them, uh -huh. but I'd have to buy all of them that didn't sell, which was half of the salary I was making that year. Yeah. And uh, so I, I got on the lecture circuit. I, some people in this area might know Education Week, so I yeah. just became an Education Week lecturer. And I thought, well, maybe if I had 100 students, you know, in a class, yeah. well, they had it on the campus. Okay. The lady said, oh, no, you'll overflow that. Well, they put me in the Dion concert hall, and we had we had five over five hundred people in my wow. class at seven o'clock in the morning. Holy cow! So I did all my fancy stuff. I kept doing it. I went home and worked all night. Got another one, another one, another one. So then I was on the circuit, traveling all over the country doing education weeks. And then BYU asked me to write a book. No way. And uh, sponsored it kind of. I mean, they gave me a writer. And yeah. So I would outline what I wanted. You know, like yeah. the doctor oven cooking. Take it to the lady. She'd write it while I outlined the next thing, and every day we'd meet. And, and the book came out in 1974. And I remember it was March. It was actually the end of March when it came wow. out. Wow! And I said, I wonder if this will change my life. And <laughs> for years, it, it was pretty much my life because I uh, in nine in 75, a year after this, yeah, I was invited to be on the Johnny Carson show. Wow. And uh, the book, be I was the first guest on, and that has millions and millions of people watching it. Yes. The book became a New York Times bestseller, and I was only beat out the whole summer by one book. Oh, no. Well, wow. it was called The Joy of Sex. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so I said, you know what? I'm going to have to write a book called Sex in the Woods. So yeah, I'm still yeah, working yeah. On the but for 13 weeks, it was number one, or number two on the New York Times bestseller. Wow. And we sold, all together, we sold over a million copies. So. That is fantastic. Yeah. Wow, what a story. That yeah. is so cool. It was great. Yes, yes. Very cool. Well, now you've brought in a bunch of stuff that I am so excited to... Are you ready to see? Yes. Well, so. Probably, and, and again, I did talk shows after talk shows. 
When I was lecturing for BYU for yeah. Education Weeks, they sent me all over the country. So I'd go to San Francisco, LA, Phoenix, uh, Dallas, Houston, and they would let me rent a Pinto car. Oh, and they would, and they I remember the Pinto. Pinto anymore. Yeah. And I would have. There was no GPS. There was no phone. Oh my no gosh. cell phones. There right. was nothing. This was in the dark ages. Yes. And I'd have to find my way to the television, newspaper, and radio stations, but. Literally for the next six years, I did local stuff, and then that's when I got on the Today Sh Today Show. Got it. Uh, I actually the fellow from BYU. Well, once we did the Tonight Show. Yeah. Then it's like you have a PhD in entertainment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the next year I was on the Today Show. Well, no, I wasn't. Margo Walters was there until Tom Tom Brokaw came on, and so when I he came, I did the Today Show, and um, I got through everything, but cooking your hamburger on the manifold of your car. Oh. So I said, Tom, I didn't get through everything. And he said, don't leave. I'll be back. <laughs> you know, when Don broke I said, don't leave. I'll be back. Yeah. I go, oh, okay, okay. So I just waited there. And when he came back, he said, we want you to come back in a couple of weeks and do three more segments. Whoa. I mean, that's like manna from heaven. Literally. No kidding. So I did three more segments for them. And then the next year they called me to do five. Wow. And my my alarm and my brain goes off and I go, da 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 you could get a job on this show. Yes. And so <laughs> I started working for that and the next year I came out with my third book called Backyard Roofing and Easy. Yeah. And they said, you know what, if you will do us first before Good Morning America, yeah. we'll give you two segments. And so here I am on the Today Show with Tom Brokaw and I'm showing them <laughs> how to take a, a wagon. You remember those red fly, flyer wagons? Oh, yes. If you have a metal one of those, you can put about four inches of dirt in it. Okay. Put heavy-duty foil over the top of it. Uh-huh. Put your chocolate briquettes on there. Okay. And you're ready to barbecue. Wow. So I had Tom with a flat-nosed shovel, you know, that yeah. they're kind of big at that front end. <laughs> right. And that was covered with foil, and it had hamburgers, so he's barbecuing his hamburgers on the on the wagon <laughs> and amazing. I pull up a pitchfork with hot dogs on it and I'm barbecuing the hot dogs on one side and he said to me because a, a wagon is this, the height of a bench yeah he turned to me and says Diane he says wonder if your friends are drunk and they come over and sit on the bench <laughs> And I said, don't worry about that, Tom. You'll just have rump roast. <laughs> <laughs> and so I got a same kind of, you know, reaction. Yeah. Of, uh, Jean Shallot and Jane Polly, and after it was over, they all came up and they said, you outdid us all because they tried to outdo each other. And, <laughs> and by then I knew a lot of them. And yeah. So I, I thought, today's the day. I have to ask for a job, you know. Yes. And I taught you in class, if you don't knock. Yeah. You don't knock on the door and ask. That's right. You don't get on. That's so right. anyway, I asked Tom if I could meet him in his office and I pitched that I'd be a regular on the show. Wow. And uh, he said, get me a proposal. A week later, I was a regular for the next eight years. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. So. That's incredible. What a story. Isn't that fun? Yes. And then I, I mean, I would go to New York about every other week and do a segment for, for them. And then after eight years, uh, I got a call. This guy was, he actually did Good Morning in America. His okay. His name was Woody, Woody, uh, Woody Frazier. Oh, okay. And so I had been on Mike Douglas for him before the Today Show. Yeah. And he said, hey, where's that girl out in Utah? Let's get her. And so I went to Estes Park, and I kind of pitched, you know, they were doing a regular ABC. It was where The View is now on ABC. Got it. It was called The Home Show. Anyway, so I went there and did, the home, did that show, and kind of, whenever I go and I taught you this, yeah. you're kind of pitching the next piece, the next segment yes. that you could do. Yes. They call me back, call me back, and one day I'm sitting in the Roosevelt Hotel, and uh, I'm reading my script. This is in, in Los Angeles, right in Hollywood. Okay. And it says, and Diane will be a regular on the show. I didn't even know. Whoa. They never asked me, but I go, yes, yes. So <laughs> at that point, I was doing the Today Show, and the... It, but it was much closer to go to L.A. Yes. So uh, after eight years, I stopped going to L New York and uh, went to L.A. and did their show. Got it. And it was I did that one for, well, it, it became a cable show after it was on network. Gotcha. And I did that up until probably two or three years ago. So wow. About 20 years. Holy cow. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize that. That's amazing. Yeah. 
Yeah. So. Fantastic. So, and then what you do is you do the ideas. Yeah. And then you put them into a book. And so I ended up writing got 19 it. books all together. Oh my gosh. I, I've actually been on the, the 45 years I've been doing media. So. Yeah. Wow. That is amazing. And now I made it on your show. And, and now you're at the pinnacle of your career, Diane. That's right. Today. Today you have reached the pinnacle of your career. I'm there. I'm there. The nice part is I'm home. I didn't have to fly somewhere. Right. I'm going to start out by showing you. I want to show you a really fun thing. Oh, I'm, I'm excited. I'm going to talk about the three top things because, you know, I, yeah. you I did over 5,000 talk shows. Yeah. And you soon learn what they like. And yes. this one is how to start a fire with, if you have a flashlight with you and you have a little steel wool, yeah. you can start a fire. Interesting. So and I'm excited you, to see this. Anyway, you put two batteries together like they go into a flashlight. Okay. Place a fine, it has to be a double out or fine steel wool on the bottom. Okay. And then you just brush it across the top. Whoa. And like a, it starts a fire. Whoa. I had no idea you could do that. So she has starts a fire in the steel wool. We don't want to start the studio on fire, but yeah, that's amazing. You put that down and it will start your fire. And you might say, well, why don't you just use a match? Well, you can use a match, but if by chance your matches got wet and you yes. have prepared them to be wet, this will start. You can just shake the water out and it will actually start too. That so. is amazing. So she, so she has two batteries in her hand, in one hand, and those are what just double. Well, or, you just you, I use any batteries. Any you batteries. Can use little tiny ones too. Really? It actually makes, and it doesn't shock you at all, but it makes a little. It makes a connection between and shorts it out and makes a spark in the steel wool. Amazing. So these two batteries in her hand touching each other. Then she takes the steel wool and touches the top of one battery and the bottom of the other. Yeah. And the steel wool just lit up on fire. It just bursts into fire. Yeah. I would do this and then the engineers on the TV show would run out. I want to try that. I want to try that. So seriously. Just put this on the bottom and then I guess people can go look at your thing and see. Yes. We'll make it you so are. that they can see it. See the steel wool on the bottom and then there's and then light the battery. Amazing. It takes off. So we are filming this again, guys. So you will definitely on Monday want to come to our YouTube channel and check out the show and you can see the visuals of what we're doing right now. This is incredible. Bailey, grab the gasoline. You <laughs> should. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful. Won't teach you anything. Okay, the next one is a little tuna fish burner, and I t miss bringing the cardboard with me, but it's a tuna fish can, and okay. you cut the cardboard exactly the height of the tuna fish can. Okay. Roll it up and put it in, so you have all these little holes sticking up. Okay. Then you take a match and put it with wax, by it and it melts the wax into the can or you can melt wax. The only thing you need to remember about wax is it bursts into a flame at a low temperature. Oh. So if you ever melt wax on your stove, yeah. you want to do it in what's called the double boiler. Oh. So you put a pan with water in it. Okay. Then you could put your wax in the can. Okay then melt it and then pour it into each one of these, you know, the yeah. little burners and fill it up. Yeah. And then what you do is turn it on the side and then you light it and you've got a little buddy burner burning with, with, wow. the, with the, from the wax. Yeah. And it's not, it's not uh, like gas or anything like this. So right. I, I know I'll teach kids. In fact, I'm, I've got a little girl coming tomorrow. She's 10 years old. Cute. She's coming to my house and yeah. I'm going to have her cook eggs and bacon and a tea Oh, that's so cute. That. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, then you take, this is kind of, mad. they used to call me MacGyver in a skirt. So. <laughs> <laughs> that right there is definitely MacGyver. Well, this is another MacGyver. You take and fill the cup with water. Okay. Put it on top of the burner. Okay. And the flames will come up around the cup. Yeah. And uh, it will actually boil the water in the paper cup. Really? So the only place you might have a little trouble is around the bottom where it is. When you have water in a cup, yeah. it cools the paper down below its combustion point. Oh. So I just usually push a little bit hard into that. Yeah. Or the same principle works if you're out there and you have a container of hot chocolate, you know, yes. uh, like a, a quart of hot chocolate. Yes. Well, just open it up. Make sure you open it up. Okay. And just slide it on your coals. Interesting. And it, and it won't burn because the chocolate will keep the paper before its combustion point. Wow. So you can actually heat your chocolate in that container. But Get anyway, out of here. You put water in here and put that on top of the burner and that will boil water in a paper cup. 
you can uh, put an egg in there and it will poach the egg. No way! Now if you hear it sputter a little bit, it, yeah. it, it became loose on the bottom. You know, the glue will come and so you take it off and just pour it to another can. But if gotcha. you want to really see these things, yeah. uh, I did the Johnny Carson show. Yes! We mentioned and uh, you can go on YouTube and just type in Diane Thomas and my I spell it without an E, it's D I A N. Yes. Thomas. And I have my and no space on YouTube. Okay. And I have my own channel and there's several videos, but watch the Johnny Carson clip. Awesome. And you will see all of the things I'm explaining on here with Johnny Carson. That is fantastic. Now the next one is cooking eggs and bacon in a paper bag and he actually does this and and, and when he takes the paper bag off the tin can he he it touches his hand and he's jumping all over the stage saying things that you and I shouldn't hear. So, but anyway, it's really delightful. You'll enjoy the Johnny Carson. And it does show you how to make a cardboard box and bake a cake in it. Wow! With a window so you can see inside and watch the cake bake. I mean, we don't let these fancy stoves, you know, that yeah. cost a lot of money yeah. bother us. We create the same thing outside. But That's incredible! Isn't that fun? But anyway, so fun. you can take a paper bag Line the bottom of the bag with strips of bacon. Okay. So I usually get the center cut of bacon because it's not as greasy. Okay. Then drop an egg in it. Okay. And then if you hold it up really high and drop it down in, it scrambles when it hits. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, so I fold this. Anyway, fold it down and put it on top of a tin can. Or you can actually stick a stick through it and then hold it above the coals. You have to be a little ways above the coals. Okay. And it will cook your eggs and bacon in your paper bag, and then you throw the bag away, and you've had your breakfast. Amazing. So, and the paper bag, obviously, is not going to burn because you're holding it high enough. High enough, yeah. yeah. If you do get it close enough, it yeah. will burn. But on, the, sure. on top of the tin can stove, uh, I actually make a... I told you the number 10 can. Yeah. I cut the a door open in it and then bend the door back and put the little buddy burner that I just described to yeah. you. Yeah. Put that in there and you have a, so it's like this and you can actually cook on top of here. Uh, and so this is really an excellent emergency thing that you can yes. use, emergency stove that you can use. Uh, got a little bit of dust on there. Because when you cut it out, the only problem is is when you do cook with the little tuna fish and the wax. Yes. It does give off some soot. So Got you it. can only use these three or four times and you have to chuck them. Okay. You know, but, but really, if you had to in an emergency, yeah. You know, and yeah. you're not dealing with gas or anything that's going to explode or light or any of that. So yes. this is really a nice one. But anyway, there's another one that's a fun one. So those are my top three starting a fire with steel and batteries. I'm going to do that tonight. Boiling water in a paper cup. <laughs> and cooking eggs and bacon in a tin can. So you, you should bring your kids over when I do it tomorrow. You're only 10 houses away. I know. <laughs> what time are you doing it? Uh, 2 o'clock. So okay. come on over. Okay. Yeah, okay. So. okay uh, another fun one is you have lint from your dryer. Oh my you gosh. All kinds of, put it, take the lint from your dryer and put it in a cardboard egg carton. Okay. And then remember I talked about melting wax. You melt it in the can in a pan with water. Okay. A double boiler. Got it. Be sure you do that. Okay. Then pour it in. I put a newspaper underneath it and then pour each one of these cups with wax. Probably half full. Okay. You know? Yeah. And then when you need a fire starter, you just break off one and it'll burn underneath your wood <laughs> oh my gosh. for 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. That's incredible. So it's a little, you have a dozen little fire starters. And if you don't have lint from your dryer or you don't save it, yeah. use your cotton balls and it works the same way. So it's a way to recycle yeah. your from your dryer. You know? That's amazing. So you'll take the match and light that and then that yeah, will be on fire. You break it off and then just take a match and light it. And just start your fire. That's incredible because I'll go through like 10 matches before my fire is actually yeah, you know, going. Yeah, one of the, and once you do it, you've got these for the next 10 fires. Yeah, <laughs> that's incredible. So that's such a fun one. But uh, there's so many. In fact, I, uh, you, one of the questions you could ask me in the book is what's in the book? Yeah. Well, it starts out teaching you how to do plan, you know, how to plan for your trip. And it has a list. Oh. Actually, it was fun. Your friend here yes. said, oh, my goodness, it has a list of everything you need to take. It has a list of that. It also has tells you how to organize. I was a, worked at a camp for 12 years, or seven years. And so we learned how to organize 12 kids. Wow. So if you have, you know, even your own kids. Yeah. We had fire builders. We had cleanup. And we had cooks. 
and then they would rotate. So breakfast, you were a fire builder, lunch, you were a cook, yes. and then dinner, you were a cleanup, and then you rotate it because what you don't want to do is go out on these camping trips and mom and dad does all the work. Yeah. <laughs> you, you literally take away the opportunity for kids to learn to be self-sufficient, and in my opinion, that's the most important thing you're teaching them is how to be self-sufficient. I love it. I love it. Then we go into equipment, different kinds of equipment, even how to improvise equipment, how to make a little tin can stove. Yep. What to look for in getting a campsite, how to build your fire. And I talk about different kinds of fires. There's a log cabin fire, there's a teepee fire, there's oh. different kinds of, depending on if you want a lot of coals yeah. or if you just want a fire. You know, different yeah. kinds of fire. What so, is the difference? Because I've, I've seen the log cabin and the teepee fire strategy by a lot of friends. The log cabin, you actually make it like a log cabin around yes. and build a little teepee in the middle. Oh. Know? So you kind of build it up like a log cabin. Okay. But the better one for a lot of coals, and, and coals depend on what kind of wood, and it will talk about that in the book. I see. Hardwood, which would be a fruit tree, an oak tree, anything like that, will burn with a lot more coals. Got it. Aspen, which we have a lot of up here. Yeah. It just, you know, it will show you coals for a few minutes, but not long. Got it. So uh, what you want to get a lot of coals would be a crisscross, which would be similar to a log cabin. Okay. Think about how a log cabin is. Yeah. And then on your next level, you go little logs all the way across. Oh, so it's called a crisscross fire. Got it. Then you turn and criss uh, put them oh, wow. next to each other on top yeah. of that. And then if you want to go another layer, you put them on top of that. And they're, they're log after log after log after log. So it's called a crisscross fire. Got it. And then underneath, you light your little fire. And it comes up, and then you'll have a lot of coals, and that's what you want to cook on. If you're cooking with a Dutch oven or something like that, if you have a chance that to get fruit sense. trees, any kind of fruit, like a peach tree, an apple tree, a cherry tree, yeah, the, the that's a very hardwood. A cedar tree is a, is a good hardwood too. Got it. So those it'll teach you all about fire building, and then the best is how to cook outside. And there's tons of recipes in the book and everything, but uh, there's two kinds of heat. There's one where you take a pan and put right on the coals. That's called okay. direct heat. Okay. And then the other one is like a Dutch oven. There's a lot of Dutch ovens around here. But yeah. What you would do is put a, a you could put jar rings or you put rocks on it. Okay. And put a pie tin in your Dutch oven. Okay. And then put coals on top and bottom, and then it, it, it it's the heat circulates and bakes your bread, bakes oh, your wow. biscuits, bakes your pies. So anyway, it'll talk to you about those, and then you have like stick cooking, which would be direct heat. Got it. Doing it. Direct. Yes. Stick cooking. Dutch oven, you could do either direct heat, or you can do it like I just talked to you about. Another one that's really what it yes. is. This, I love the way out stuff, because it's like magic. You yeah, become, no kidding. You give become me. MacGyver, you know? Yes. Another one is solar cooking with just the sun. Now, it's a little less now than it was in the summer, but I have literally baked a chicken. Really? With uh, solar heat. I bake bread with solar heat. Whoa. And y there is a company out of, um, it tells you in my Roughing It Easy book, but it's out of California that does solar cooking. And when you buy one of their box solar box, and they're excellent. Yes. They're made out of cardboard box. So you, I think they're, they were about $20, so it wouldn't be much over that. When you buy one, you buy one for somebody in Africa. And so what they oh. do is they teach these people in Africa how to do this. Because the biggest problem in Africa is finding wood. Oh. And then when the women go out and try to find wood, yeah, yeah, some man may, you know, yeah, approach them and they're, you know, they're right. being raped or whatever. Yeah. So they try to get these people in Africa to cook in boxes because they have a lot of sun. Interesting. Anyway, so interesting all the things you can learn from this. So no then we kidding. go into backpacking, all the how to do backpacking, even how to dehydrate your own food for backpacking. Got it. And then another one I have is winter camping. You can actually actually do this in my backyard, so you can do it in your backyard for your kids. Okay. You uh, once you get a nice snow, you probably need at least a foot. Mm -hmm. You take your snow blower out and blow it into the center and get a dome. Uh, you know, a dome. Yeah. So you pack it down. Okay. And then you take st like a sticks that are ten inches long. Okay. And you spray paint the bottom part of the stick. Then you s nail it into the snow all the way around. So you do it about every foot. You nail one of these in. Okay. Then you start digging with your kids in, and you dig until you get to the black stick. Oh. And that gives you a twelve inch layer of snow on there. And what I did, I did it for the home show. 
the guy, my producer said, well, you have to go sleep in it. This was in my backyard, which is right next to you. Anyway, so I, I haul out blankets, I haul out sleeping bags, I haul it all out and put my uh, thing down. I go out yeah. to sleep in the snow hut. Oh my gosh. I mean, it was so hot, I had to get rid of all this stuff. <laughs> what happens is you, you give off heat, your yes. body gives off heat, and it's enclosed in there. Yeah. So you actually warm it. And, and if you pat that down, you don't have any trouble of it you know, falling in on you or anything. So, right. so we do a lot on winter, and then also on preparing for emergencies. So that's all in Roughing It Easy. And uh, I, the, I went on, on the Amazon last night in... Uh, I had ten reviews on it. <laughs> Nine That's of awesome. them were five stars. On the it was, yeah, there's it. There's the one. Uh, Roughing it easy. And one lady said, the "Incredible, clever ideas for making camp easier and more fun." And uh, another lady said, "Fun book, even if you hate camp, <laughs> <laughs> because you do have all these magic things." That Seriously. Everybody. Yeah. I'm looking at the cover of. Roughing it easy, uh, recipes. recipes for roughing it easy, yeah. and something that stood out, I mean there's a lot of great visuals on this, but the one that stood out is you, it appears that you, it's called bake breakfast in an orange, you take an orange and you cut it in half, right. but then you've taken the actual orange out, and then you've put stuff in it. Can you, can you share a little bit, because that picture absolutely. is awesome. Absolutely, this is absolutely one of the funnest, so you cut the orange in half, Okay. if you can, don't get a thin skinned orange, get a thicker skinned orange. Oh, sure, that makes sense. Because then you can put your finger down between the meat part and the and the orange. Yes. Slide it around and pop it out. Okay. Both of them. And then inside of that you can uh, you can cover it with foil if you want. Okay. If you don't want the flavor of the orange, you get a little bit of flavor of the orange, or you can just put the egg in it and cook it <laughs> and then eat the egg out of it. But and then you put foil take foil and then bring the foil up around the the shell of the orange, yes, and then twist it at the top and put it right on your coals, and it will bake the egg inside of that. And then, if you want a muffin, I always use. I thought I had. Oh, yeah, I've got them here. Ziploc bags are great to take with you to uh, put mixes in. So I put the mix in, and then I just take the directions and tape it to the side. Yes. Then you just take the, and it's usually it's just water you have to add. So you put the water in it. Got it. Zip it across the top, mix that, and then you squeeze it out into the egg. Yeah. So you've got a muffin. Amazing. See? And then squeeze it into that. And put, uh, you don't put it all the way to the top. You put it about two-thirds away. Put it on, on foil. So just open your, your sheet of foil like this. Yes. Tear that off. <laughs> Put it right in the middle. We have to have we have to have sound with you. Yeah. Hold that up to the top. Put that on the coals, and that will bake the muffins. So you have an egg and egg McMuffin. Amazing. Your oranges, and then you mentioned. I want to tell you about the other one. That yes. And do you do the bacon in an orange as well, or that? no? Okay. The bacon, you'd actually have to cook on okay. something. Okay. But gotcha. you know, if you had a hot rock. Yeah. Make sure you don't get the rock out of the stream bed because it will pop. Oh you know, yeah, yeah, in it. yeah. But if you have real, you can actually cook on a hot rock. You can take, get a one that's you know you. There's a lot of hot rocks. In fact, up along Wasatch Boulevard, I would always gather my rocks to take to the Today Show or to the <laughs> Home Show or whatever. Awesome. I remember walking, Good. going down the. I had a, a, yeah. What do you call him? The guy that comes and helps you carry your suitcase down the. The, oh yeah. What do you call those guys? Anyway, he was hauling my like my suitcase down, and he goes, "Lady, this really feels like it has rocks in it." <laughs> I go, "It does, it does." Yeah. <laughs> Going through security at the airport oh, yeah. with yeah. rocks in your suitcase. I've done that with everything from ants to rocks. <laughs> But I got them through, so uh, anyway. But there's so many fun things. Another one of my favorite ones is to take banana. You take the banana just like, uh, and you know, you, most bananas curve a little bit. Yeah. They're not just straight. Right. Curve up. Right. So take the curve and then just take a knife and slit right down the center of the ban banana. Okay. Don't go through the back skin. Okay. But go into the meat of it. Open that up just like it's a canoe. Okay. Then put milk, chocolate chips, and miniature marshmallows oh, down the center of that. Oh, yeah. Wrap that in your foil. Put that in the middle of the foil. Wrap that up. Uh-huh. 
put that down on the coals and let it stay for about five minutes. Ooh, that sounds the chocolate good. Chocolate and the marshmallow melt down the center. Wow. Now, if you're in house and you want to do it at home, yeah, you do that and put the chocolate chip and miniature marshmallows and put it in the microwave, and you can zap it for about ten seconds. Just and then don't look at it and see if the chocolate's melted. Gotcha. And you leave the banana in there still. Leave, oh yeah, the okay, banana's yeah. in there. All you do is open it up like it's a little cake. Okay, now, yeah. Now you can do pineapple in there. You can oh, do sure. nuts in there. You can do yeah. You know whatever yeah. you want to try. It's and that's one of the things that I like. Is, yeah. And then if we forget something out on a trip, I go, oh good, that's a great learning experience. Right. <laughs> right. And you teach <clears throat> children and you teach people to be self-sufficient. Yes. And also not to panic because something didn't work out. Right. Nowadays, kids think everything has to work out perfect. Well, no, it, in life it never does. <laughs> that's true. That you know, ask true. President Trump right now. It yeah. didn't work out perfect. But, you know, I mean, whatever. Yeah. Um, so you, you have to figure out how to go around that and, right. and work with it. But I've got a couple of other, Are you ready for more? Or do you I am ready for more. And you were going to talk about the one that intrigues me the most because I love... Oh, the meatloaf yes. and onion. Yes. Okay, okay. Yes. Meatloaf and onion. I take an onion that's about the size of a softball. Okay. A little bigger than a hardball softball. Okay. Okay. Cut off the root. Okay. Then peel off the outside of the onion. Okay. Okay, then cut through the middle. Okay. So when right you open half. it up, you've got half of a, I mean, it's, it's, you can pop out half. Gotcha. Pop out the other half and then take a seasoned hamburger, but I sometimes just put hamburger with a little salt and pepper in it. Yeah. Put it in there and put it back together. Then put it on your foil. So you want the foil to be, uh, oh, probably two or three inches on both sides. Got it. Longer, maybe a little bit longer. Okay. There. Put the, uh, the onion in that. Yeah. And then bring it up to the top, roll it down in small folds. And I use 18 inch foils the best. Okay. Flatten it on both sides, then roll that up. Yep. And on the other side, we'll roll that up. Okay. And then you've got a little package like this. Now, we're, we have a video guy. Yes. Here. I put an apple in here, but literally, well, you could bake the apple in here. That oh, would be yeah. Fine. But I literally put the meatloaf and onion in that, put it down on the coals, and 15 minutes on each side. Okay. So I have everybody mark theirs with a magic marker. Yeah. When you take that out, if you have a salad, you go to dinner. Wow. And then uh, I take the number 10 can like this, and I'll take a gallon, uh, so I'll take a gallon uh, plastic bag. Okay. Right? You know, zip like that. Yep. If you'll put ice, if you have ice, you yes. know, but if you have a cooler, you got ice, put yes. it on the bottom, open up the bag, and make your salad right inside of this. <laughs> so you put the, great idea. Put this around the outside. Yeah. Like this, and then you've got your salad inside the can. Yeah. And your can, you use that later to make ice cream. And then the problem I have, now not in the fall, but because the flies aren't around. But, yeah. But what you do then to keep the flies off is I take an embroidery hoop. Oh my and gosh. I put saran wrap in between the embroidery hoop, and you can put it on top of it in the... You can see the food inside, but the flies can't get in. That is genius. Isn't that good? That is so good. So th this is just a few of the tips that you can find in there. I think it's time we wash our hands since we've been cooking. I yes. I'll show you that. Yes. I brought a bleach bottle. It's I'm excited to see this. It's just a Clorox jug. Okay. And, uh, I have painted a face on it and put a rope on the back of it. Okay. And then also took nylon so sock and put soap inside the sock. Oh, nice. So you've got a hand wash. You can wash your hands. Yeah. The thing is you have to get it wet. So this will hang, literally hang from a tree. And the key is, is if you made the hole really small yeah. and the lid is on air tight, then the water will not run out. Oh my gosh, genius. Because it's like a, when you suck water into a straw and yeah. put your tongue yeah. over when you're a kid, yeah. and then you let your the tongue off. Yeah. The water runs out. Exactly. The same principle here. So when you want to turn on the water, awesome. you just unscrew the lid. That is so cool. That is so freaking cool. Isn't that fun? That there is you. so fun. And it, the water, I have painted a face on it. Oh my goodness. So you'll have to go to Ushi. Where do you tell them where you go? Yeah, so guys, if you're listening, go to utahomesweethome.com. That's the website. Scroll down to the bottom and click on the YouTube social media link. 
this all all these things she's showing us right now in studios you'll be able to see on just watch her on uh, on our YouTube channel. That's incredible. Isn't this fun? So fun. I mean, and you know, again, kids. I have to tell you a little story that happened yeah. to me. You know that I'm a, I've written many books. One of them is called Holiday Fun Year Round. Yes. But I always I was a homemade teacher. I even have a master's degree in education to ha on how to teach. Yeah. So I'm always trying to give information. Yes. And my little my niece has a little boy that's seven years old, and so for family home evening, these kids I gave them three of them, so each one of them can have a book and they can be reading it. So one day his uh, his mother cut an apple and he said. Mom, you really need to put lemon juice on that so it doesn't turn dark. She said, Tyler, where'd you learn that? I read it in Diane's Holiday Fun Book. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> so, that, anyway, if you want to have fun holiday ideas, go to Holiday Fun. But, you know, in the, in the 40 years of doing this, I yes. just had to come up with just, every week had to come up with a new idea. Every incredible. Every single week. And so... I did everything from change a car tire to change your oil to <laughs> boil water in a paper cup and cook eggs and bake in a paper bag. And I think we should probably tell you how to make ice cream in a tin can. I would love to know how to make ice cream in a tin can. Is this just a like a coffee can? Just yeah. Okay. It's, it's a bit. It's a, what we call a number ten can. If anybody ten. has emergency food, okay, it would be in one of these cans. But they're not too hard. Yeah. Restaurants get their peaches in them, get their pears in them. Whatever. Yeah, I feel like I've seen coffee in them too. Oh, like a, coffee, everything. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a, it's a food storage can. Okay. For large quantities, so Got if it. you know somebody that works in a restaurant. Yes. Wendy's has this, right? Yeah. So any any restaurant will get quantities of food in this. Got thing. it. Ask them to save your save your cans. And okay. They'll wash them out and, and save them. The lids the lids gone. But what I did is I got plastic lids, and I I'm sure you can pick some of those up. Mm -hmm. so, well, they actually have them on your coffee, so you can put them over the coffee. Oh yeah, yeah, that makes sense. On there. So then I take a one pound size coffee can. Okay. And that has the lid. Okay. And what you have to do when you go to the store because there used to be nuts and stuff in the one yeah. pound can. Yeah. You can hear the can. Yep. No, they're not nuts in them anymore. They put them in a, a cardboard one. So oh. you go to the coffee cans and then you look and see if it's a metal can. Got it. Not a cardboard one. Okay, gotcha. So you have to kind of look underneath it, yeah. at the bottom part. Yeah. And when you see a can, then you buy that, take the coffee out, and clean the can out, and then you put one cup of cream, one cup of milk. Okay and about a fourth of a cup of sugar. Okay. You want the mixture to fill the can. This is a one pound size coffee can, about half full. Okay. You don't want to open that. Put the lid back onto it. Put this can inside of the larger can. And okay. As you can see, yep. you've got about an inch around the side of that. Let him zoom in on that. So yeah. That all of you at home can see that. Exactly. And then, uh, Yoshi, you could see. Yes. So then you put the chunk ice in between that, and this is where you teach your kids. If you were just to make roll that back and forth, it would not make ice cream in the middle can. Okay. So the magic ingredient is salt. Oh. When you put an ice, just use ice cream salt. Yeah. Or, or, or the salt that you you could use the salt that you, you know, salt your driveway with. Oh. Okay. Because the can is it has a lid on it. Sure. So when you put that on the ice, it drops the it chemically drops the temperature of the ice down to the point that you can have make ice cream in the tin can. Interesting! Wow! How is that? That is amazing. Then you put the plastic, the lid on top of that, and then we go out and uh, you kick. I call it kick the can ice cream. You just roll it back and forth. The kids can. <laughs> Kneel down and roll it back and forth to each other. Yeah. You roll that can back and forth for about 15 minutes. It will actually freeze, remember, because the, yeah. the salt causes the ice to drop its temperature. You open it up and it's all half of it's frozen around this edge and the other half is liquid. So you just take the outside with a knife and then mix it with the other and you have perfect ice cream. Amazing. Isn't that fun? That is so fun. Wow! So there's so many things that you can do outside and again what I like the most about it is it teaches you to be 
self-sufficient. Yes. If something goes wrong, you figure it out. <laughs> I love it. Another one, uh, I, you know, you have to go, if you're going to the woods, you're going to be going to the bathroom. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have what's called my Midnight Survival Kit. Okay. It's a gallon Ziploc bag with yep. a flashlight in it, and then I take a roll of toilet paper and I remove the cardboard part out so it actually pulls from the center. Oh, no way! So, uh, in the middle of the night, you just put this by the tent, in the middle of the night when you're ready to go out, you tie this to the tent, uh -huh. turn your flashlight on so you can find your way in the woods and just leave a trail behind you and you can always find your way back. No way! That's fantastic. So it just pulls out like this. That is yeah. so cool! And then you have your little flashlight to find your way into the woods and then yes. you find your way back. But literally it is a fun way, but it does keep your uh, toilet paper clean and your flashlight all together. And, exactly. You know, you just, and again, you don't have to figure out all these ideas that are in my book. Yes, roughingiteasy.com, guys. Check out roughingiteasy.com. Um, you can also go to Diane Thomas without an E, D-I-A-N. Actually, you can put an E on it. Oh, and, and you can put an E. Will, both of them will take you to the website. Perfect. And then what you do is go to contact. Okay. Contact whatever else. Yep. And then go, scroll down a little bit, and there's a place you can ask me questions or ask me anything you want and send it to me. I promise you I will and personally answer your nice. email. And just push a button and send it to me, and it's on its way. So. Wow. That is fantastic. Okay. And then also on that website, yeah. I should, do we have a second? Yeah, no, please. Okay, on that website, there are a lot of ideas. Go, I think it's the idea one or whatever. Go there, and the ice cream in a tin can is yep. there. There's, I think, um, there's other cook, outdoor cooking ones. Yep. And then we talked about, that we talked a little bit about travel. Right. And so I was a travel guide to China for 15 years. That's right. And uh, so I have articles about China. I have actually traveled to 50 countries. Wow. And, uh, so I have articles on that, all, on travel, and just, I love travel because you learn. I mean, yes. And why, I, to me, we're here to learn. Exactly. That's, that's the main thing, we're here to learn. Exactly. And, by the way, I for, forgot to tell you one more outdoor thing before we go into the travel part. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, and I want to see the shower before we go to the travel yeah, part. I forgot about that. She's okay. got a shower. This, say this is our roasting stick. Okay going to be about three feet long. You put it into the apple. Okay. And you push it all about halfway into the apple. And then you take and put that out over the coals. Okay. So I have a long stick. I had it out and I don't know why I didn't make it into the box. But anyway, you roast that around the fire and it'll start to get kind of glossy. Yeah. Keep roasting that and then after it's really kind of warmed up, it'll be easy to peel. So you peel that off. And then you take sugar and cinnamon. Ooh. And then you see it's juicy on the inside. <laughs> You've already taken the skin off of that. You roll that in the sugar and the cinnamon. Then the, the, you can see it's already sticking. Pie. Yeah. You roll that in sugar and cinnamon and put it back over the coals. And I call it apple pie on the end of a stick. It, so you exactly just roast that, pie. and then you can eat part of it off and just put sugar and cinnamon and put it back out of the coals. Wow. And I mean, it is amazing to do. So I love it. Uh, we got to show you the shower. Yeah, Diane things. Thomas brought a shower into the studio, which yeah. she's going to show right now. So again, utahhomesweethome.com. Scroll to the bottom of the website. Click on YouTube, the YouTube link. These videos are going to be up on YouTube here shortly, but she literally made a shower here in the studio. Yeah. You take an umbrella, turn the umbrella, open it up, and turn the umbrella upside down. And the distance between the, the holes in an umbrella and the... Oh, I'm sorry. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. I don't want you to miss this. Yeah. Uh, you take an umbrella, open it up, yep. and uh, you, the distance between the holes in the... A shower curtain and the prongs in the umbrella are exactly the same. That's amazing. So it takes a little over a shower. In fact, I was reading in one of the reviews of my book, they said go to your dollar store and buy two light shower curtains. Wow. And that works perfect. So I got that out of the yeah. reviews for my book last night. Right. But anyway, you put that together and hook it on a tree. Okay. Hook that up on a tree. I'll, I'll talk really loud. Yeah. Like this. That's amazing. Hey, you've got a room to take your shower she in. She just walked into the shower, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. And she people say to me, shower. What do you, I say to women, if you want to just get away from it, go in here and say, leave me alone, I'm in the shower. Leave yeah, me yeah. alone, I'm in the shower. <laughs> but what you do is take a, an insecticide can. Amazing. You know, you go to Home, 
Home yeah. Depot or something like a, a Lowe's or a Home Depot and buy right. the insecticide can and yes. three gallons. Okay. If you can get a dark one, it's even better. Or paint it black, and then when you're outside, the sun will warm it. Yes. And you've got, and then you pump it up. So I put camping only on the shower part on the can. Yeah. So it's not used for. Then don't go use an ins one that you've used for insecticide. Right. It has to be brand new. Yes, clean. Camping only. Camping Fill only. Fill it with water, and then when you pump it up, you've got a three-gallon shower. That is incredible. So. I'm I'm literally gonna do that the next time I go camping. And also for the people that get a little bit older. Yeah. You can spray off your toes with a wand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's perfect. So just remember the main thing is go create experiences yes. with your family that are just amazing and special. And they'll, they'll remember them the rest of their life. I remember, maybe I can backpack a little bit, but my father was a forest ranger. And that's yes. kind of how I came to do all of this. Got it. So in Monticello, he was the, I know some of you have heard of the Bears Ears. Yeah. Because it was such a controversy. Yeah. Well, the Bears Ears was his ranger district. Oh my gosh. So I literally grew up riding on his hay rack over the Bears Ears and wow. seeing all of that. So, but I remember when I was 14, We and if anybody's from Monticello, they'll know, Buckboard yeah. Flats. Yeah. So that was about seven miles up the mountain. We'd go to Buckboard Flats, and I remember my dad making sourdough biscuits, and I have his recipe in the... <laughs> Res, uh, recipes for roughing it easy. Yes. I have the sour, how to make your own sourdough start, how to do biscuits, pancakes, all of that. Anyway, so we he would make sourdough biscuits, and I remember taking them out of the Dutch oven. They're steaming as you take them yes. out. Yes. You open that up and put a little butter and honey on it, and I meant I was hooked from then on and, and loved this, and, and literally have, have traveled the world sharing these ideas with people. Wow, this is incredible. I'm, I cannot wait to go through this. You know, and right now with uh, obviously the pandemic and, and uh, everybody's social distancing, I think everybody should go pick up this book, roughingiteasy.com. There's so many things to do yeah. inside here. There, there is one a hardback cover of it for eight hundred and fifty-five dollars on Amazon. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you could probably get it on Amazon for around ten dollars for a minute, but it's a used one. Yeah. But if you go to my site, roughingiteasy.com, and I get enough of you ordering it, I'll reprint it. I just I need to reprint. It. But we've actually sold a million of those, and it first came out in nineteen seventy-four, and then wow. I revised it in nineteen seventy-five. Wow, so that's crazy. Anyway. So buy the eight hundred dollar one. <laughs> yeah, buy the eight hundred. It's not mine. Yeah, you know, yeah. I wonder who's but, selling it. But for do that. write me a note if you yeah. heard this and you like it and you have any questions about it. I promise you, uh, I will personally answer your emails or your your notes. So that so all you is have to awesome. do is go to the contact us, go to the bottom, and then hit and send it. And, It'll be there. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, we have come to the end of our show. Diane, thank you so much for coming in and sharing. You're welcome. My pleasure. I really appreciate it. You guys have been listening to K Talk Radio, 1640 AM, the show Utah Home Sweet Home. Again, go to roughingiteasy.com. Also, go to utahhomesweethome.com. Scroll to the bottom of the page. Click on the YouTube link. We will have this video up on there shortly, and you can check out all of these wonderful things. And I hope all of you have a spectacular rest of the day. Okay, before we part ways, in case you have a dog or know someone else who does have a dog, I wanted to take a quick second to show you the snap leash. The snap leash can literally do so many things, and I'm going to share with you one of the many cool things that it can do. As you can see, the snap leash is designed with two swivel hooks, one on each end. This end has a cushion stitched into it to make it comfortable when walking your dog. Now all you have to do is take this swivel hook, put it into this very first grommet, and now you've got your handle. Okay, so now let's imagine you're at the park and you want to secure your pet quickly, safely, and easily to a park bench, a tree, or a pole because you just want to sit down and relax. Well. All you need to do is take this swivel hook, remove it from the very first grommet, wrap this leash around any size tree or pole or park bench, and put it into the appropriate grommet, and now you have secured your pet quickly, safely, and easily. And when it's time to head home, another great feature about the snap leash is you can simply wrap it around your waist for hands-free walking. Lastly, if you ever accidentally forget your waist bags at home, 
These grommets make a great place to fasten the waist bag so you never leave home without them. And if you want to see all of the other cool things that the Snap Leash can do, then please just click on the link below and find out why so many others are falling in love with the Snap Leash.